year. So I commend this bill. I call Maureen Pugh. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, it's uh, been quite an entertaining reading of this uh, private international law, choice of law in tort bill. And uh, I think it's always a good indication of how desperate we are for material when we start talking about reggae as part of international cho choice of law taught. Um, Mr Speaker, this, uh, this bill here is in the name of uh, Sarah Dowie, a chair of the Justice and Electoral Select Committee, and um, was first read in this House by the now very honourable David Bennett. And as we learned earlier today too, that uh, Mr Bennett is the first Cabinet Minister from Hamilton in 33 years. So um, a proud moment for that electorate, I imagine. A fine achievement indeed it is. And, um, and also I learned tonight that this bill was first introduced into this House by the former member for West Coast Tasman, Chris Ockenvoll. And uh, a fine, upstanding gentleman he is as well. And I imagine that he would have relished the opportunity of speaking to this very interesting bill himself. But I have to say I agree with uh, my colleague David Clendon tonight when I, uh, when I first started dealing with this bill in the Select Committee. I was challenged. Um, <laughs> It, uh, I, I, first of all, could not work out what on earth a tort was. And uh, for me, Mr Clendon, it sounded like something you put in a pie dish and bake and serve with cream. But it actually is a tort, is a wrongful act, and that results in uh, civil liability. Um, but of course, as we've heard tonight, it does not apply to contracts. Um, in common law jurisdictions, it is a civil wrong that unfairly causes someone else to suffer loss or harm, which results in legal liability for the person who commits the tortious act. And the victim of the harm can recover their losses as damages in a lawsuit. But in order to successfully take a case, a case the plaintiff in the lawsuit, common, commonly referred to as the injured party, must show that the actions or lack of action was the actual um, cause of the harm, and that has to be able to be legally identified as the cause. And if anyone was wondering uh, what the person is called who commits the act, they are called a tort visa, for reference. When an action is brought in New Zealand, in a New Zealand court, for a tort that happened outside of this country, the common law rule of uh, double actionability applies, and we've heard a lot about that tonight, Mr Speaker. So what does it mean, some may ask? Um, it means that where a tort is committed outside of New Zealand, uh, that uh, the tort claims only successful if it is actionable in both the New Zealand jurisdiction and the country where the tort took place. So the plaintiff must establish that the tort would have been actionable in New Zealand um, if it had been committed here and that the tort is actionable under the law of the country in which it was committed. So, but in both of these, uh, sat if both of those are satisfied, then uh, the court applies New Zealand's law to the substance of that claim. And, but it does get complicated when one country has a more significant relationship with the event and that led to the tort and with both parties involved, in which case the substantive law of that country can be applied to, to the complete exclusion of the other law. And an example of that situation could be where an employee, a New Zealand employee is, say, working overseas and suffers an injury due to um, negligence of the employer in creating an unsafe workplace. So if, the if it is the law in the country where the event took place, is it New Zealand law or perhaps uh, the, the country where the injury took place? So the law applies from that country, or if the employee was to sue, say, the parent company 
of that um, employer who may actually be residing in Australia, which law would apply. So it does get very confusing, um, Mr Speaker, and this bill does, go, um, does clarify this. Uh, we were told by submitters, of which we've heard there were, were only two, that there is a huge consensus for um, the double action ability rule to torts claims to, um, to be removed. It is um, agreed that it was outdated and no longer fit for purpose. And it has been abolished in the United Kingdom, Australia and in Canada. So this bill removes that double action ability and this aspect of the bill was supported by the New Zealand, New Zealand Law Society and other submitters. Um, the private international law choice of law and tort bill is very similar to the UK Act, which was seen by the New Zealand Law Society as providing a very valuable resource in creating a body of uh, um, case law that's accrued in the United Kingdom, so that will help with the interpretation and the application of the law here in New Zealand. But, Mr Speaker, we did rely very heavily on the legal advisers to the Select Committee. It's a, it was a very um, technical bill, and it did require the expertise of those legal minds to guide us through the process. And I thought I would um, share with, uh, with the House tonight one of the most famous tort lawsuits uh, that has happened in recent history. And it was the case of a 79-year-old woman who sued McDonald's uh, when she spilled her coffee and was burned. So the 79-year-old woman, um, Stella Liebeck, spilled a cup of McDonald's coffee in her lap and sustained third-degree burns. And as a result of that, um, Mrs Liebeck had to have skin grafts. So she had quite a lot of recovery and um, healing to do. And when she went to McDonald's and asked them to cover her medical bills, uh, they, they declined. So um, Mrs Liebeck filed a civil lawsuit. And it was found during the case that McDonald's had been negligent because they'd received th thousands of complaints from other customers about the temperature of their coffee, yet they had continued to instruct their staff to serve the coffee at this high temperature. So when Mrs Liebeck um, was burned, the, uh, she could prove that McDonald's had been negligent because they were aware of the ha potential harm of the temperature of this coffee. And in, uh, in the end, Mrs Liebeck was awarded damages, um, $200,000 for her medical bills, and then $2.7 million for punitive damages. Um, that was later revised down to 640000 and then appealed and um, it was settled out of court. But the point in this is that had Mrs Liebeck been a Kiwi on holiday in the United States, then she must prove that, the, that, the, um, that she, there was a duty of care owed to her by McDonald's and that she had suffered actual loss, injury or damage um, that were directly caused by uh, McDonald's negligence, uh, which she obviously did. Under this bill, wherever the, the events occurred, that is the applicable law, or in the event of damage to property, it is deemed to be the country where the property was located. So if Mrs Liebeck was an American um, on holiday in New Zealand at the time of the incident, the ability to apply a tort law is severely curtailed because of our Accident Compensation Act. So in summary, Mr Speaker, actionability in the place where the damage was done. If something happens in New Zealand, it is dealt with under New Zealand law. If it occurs in another country, it is that jurisdiction which will apply. This bill aligns us with similar jurisdictions internationally and therefore simplifies the law. I commend it to the House. I call uh, Lewis Wall. Uh, Mr Speaker. I'm